You know what I love about doing this show? The people, the people on the show, they're like, they're like children to me. It's very important to create that kind of family atmosphere. As a good Jewish boy, I was brought up in London's East End, and I, my mother, Sadie Beige, the kosher chicken giblet queen of Whitechapel, is still was barely alive. She can't even recognize me. Uh, my father, Jaime, who was the gusset king of Bo, had the pats for a penny stall in Brook Lane Market. Sadly, uh, died face down in a sunless tray of crotchless camisole knickers. He was literally knickered out, the poor man. But you see, they, they loved me in their own way. We were so poor, though, uh, I was very unwanted. As a child, I had to take a cap home from the hospital. My bath time toys were a toaster and a hair dryer. So unwanted was I. They actually got another child to play me in home movies. I was so unwanted. And so I was breastfed, though, for six months by my uncle, uh, Uncle Murray, who, who died uh, drinking a bottle of varnish. Horrible death, but a lovely finish. <laughs> so I couldn't wait to have children of my own. And uh, I have two, uh, Nathan and Naomi. And Naomi, who, uh, she's the ruby in my family crown jewels. A beautiful girl, despite her lazy eye, but she frankly could have eyes like Marty Feldman and she'd still be the apple of mine. Whereas my son, Nathan, <laughs> is the sty in the eye, the kind of weeping pustule you get in your eye after spending too many nights staying up, uh, debating the merits of fat goy slim with underemployed graphic designer in converted warehouses in Shoreditch. He calls himself a, a DJ. I call him a little some piece of filth. I have no idea how he claims kinship with such luminaries as Alan Fluff Freeman, David the Kid Jensen, or even Dave Lee the Harry Cornflake Travis. I've heard his, uh, his, his radio show um, <laughs> incessantly. There's barely a travel update or a weather report. Hmm? What do you expect from a boy with as much chutzpah as a wheel clamp? He spends all the, the hours of daylight adding another crust to his duvet whilst ogling the disgusting mother and daughter tag teams that infest the sets of Ricky Lake and Jerry Springer. Sometimes he ventures forth before dark if his drug dealer's 4 by 4 is in the garage, or actually the last time was when he spilt a bottle of poppers on his futon. I caught him in my walk-in wardrobe shouting, Lift it! Lift it! Lift what? If you're gonna have children, keep them away from drugs. Drugs don't work. And believe me, I should know. Max Romeo, a legend on the warehouse. And now another legend on the warehouse. A legend in his own leisure time. A legend in beige. Show 13, Lenny. Are you superstitious? Yeah. You know, superstition is a very, very strange thing. Particularly with performers. They have their own little foibles, superstitious foibles. I have it on very good authority that Rosemary eats live tadpoles on the day of a performance that Moira Stewart wears absolutely nothing beneath the desk when she reads the news. But I, Lenny Page, am a man of simple pleasures, and I, well, before I perform, I pray to a little wax and mud effigy that hangs in the doorway of my dressing room. It's a, it's a Frank Sinatra, old Blue Lips himself, a, a wonderful man in many ways, because it's not a, well, it's a little known fact, I, I didn't uh, actually attend school. I went to the University of Life, where there is, of course, ample parking, and you should see the students union it's quite remarkable my former qualifications came in the form of an o level from frank sinatra and how to tie a bow tie on stage i got an a level in mic technique courtesy of <laughs> sammy davis jr uh ba honors in <laughs> tiger growling and hip swiveling movements courtesy of tom jones and then of course an ma uh, in high leg kicking from the great oracle himself dr frankie vaughan but it's Sinatra who will always remain very dear to me, very deep in my heart, old Blue Lips himself, you know. Not for nothing did the Chroma Chronicle call me Old Beige Eyes. And the similarities are extraordinary. Just as Sinatra got his big break in show business when he was per performing as a singer with the Tommy Dorsey Band, I got my big break as a rhythm guitarist in the Ray McVeigh Big Band. He had the, the Hollywood Brat Pack. I was leader of the Elstree Brit Pack. They had Sammy Davis, Dean Martin, Joey Bishop, Peter Lawford. I had Charlie Hawtrey, Roy Kinnear, Bernard Breslau. They had the bright lights of Vegas. We had the illuminations of Chroma. We both moved into film. Sinatra made Guys and Dolls and High Society. I made I'll Sleep in the Wet Patch and Confessions of a Striking Docker. 
but I will contest strongly till the day that I die that we have links with the Mafia in order to get into film. And just because the chairman of the Children's Film Foundation decides to wake up with the severed head of his wife's poodle next to him on the pillow is neither my business and nothing at all to do with my childhood friend, Morty the Hacksaw Cohen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a good Jewish boy. I don't need hoods to get me big parts, as my big part doesn't even have a hood. Well, that's just about it, ladies and gentlemen. The final show is almost finished. And I'm going to be celebrating here at the bar with wine-style drinks. I'm not going to be getting arseholed, uh, ripped to the tits on Kestrel Super Strength Lager beers, grabbing onto some plump midriff and singing like Paul Young with laryngitis. Nor will I be snorting Charlie Chang or Snow or Bugle or Nosebag. Oh, no. Did you see any Blue Peter presenters on tonight's show? No! In fact, have you seen Blue Pizza recently? It's unbelievable. Resembles an after-show party with Guns N' Roses and Stringfellow's Cabaret of Angels. There's, there's lewd behavior, thigh, cleavage, and no discernible brass to speak of. Now, you know who I'm talking about, and you know who you are, you. You little snuffling truffle pigs out there, you little Richard Bacons, you. I see you in my club. Trotting off to the toilet like, like, a, like a bunch of talc-addicted toilet ducks in combat trousers. And at Christmas, it gets worse. Oh, yes, for you people, oh, come, all ye faithful, is merely an invitation to go roll your banknotes and lick your saliva-stained boots loyalty card in a toilet cubicle from which you may well emerge feeling joyful and triumphant. All your little Christmas presents weigh a gram and have to be very carefully unwrapped in the presence of at least one media tart. You make me sick. Drugs just, quite frankly, just say no. In the wise words of Mr. Melly Mel, do, 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 don't, 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 do it, baby. But if you just say no to the Bolivian marching powder, and you say yes to a clean conscience, a clean nose, and a secure job on Blue Peter, you say bye-bye to Charlie the drug, and say hello to Otis the aardvark and Bonnie the dog. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, you know, even on Grange Hill, they're having problems with real-life Zamos, yeah? Apparently, all the pupils on Grange Hill are dilated! <laughs> and ever since they changed their logo from a very tasteful rotating globe to a large balloon filled with hot air, I think the BBC now stands for Bags and Bags of Charlie. Recently, Fred Dynage invited me to TV Center to see the recording of his new quiz show, Pass the Buck. But I'm very glad to... I'm very glad to report that he's more old speckled hen than Bolivian dancing dust. And I saw nothing more sinister than one of the Chuckle Brothers using moisturizer. So, children, however you choose to celebrate the end of the warehouse, do it in style with wine-style drinks.